Hello and welcome back to your show Identities Um Club, where today we're talking to Ambassador Bronte from the Australian Embassy to Zimbabwe uh, through our series uh, Women in Leadership during the 16 days of activism, but generally in this season where we're talking about women's, women and girls' issues. And thank you very much, Ambassador, for sharing with us your personal story. So we we spoke about a couple of issues um, earlier on, and education being one of them, mm. um, and the environment in which a child grows up also being a part of it. I want to understand what is uh, the Australian situation around education. In in terms of education, um, as I mentioned before, I think the opportunities are very good. Generally mm -hmm. in Australia, we have a very good education system. Um, the opportunities there for everybody to get a good education. Mm -hmm. But I think we still face some broader issues right. of of discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think the education is a fundamental basis, but then it has to be the opportunities have to be followed after that for women to right. be able to. Um, then move on to positions of leadership in, in society. And we know that education is a fundamental basis for, for women to participate or even for men to participate. And the, the Constitution of Zimbabwe, actually, Section 75, uh, says that it's the responsibility of the government to make sure that children are in school. And we are currently running a campaign called Every Child in School, mm -hmm. where we've been asking the government of Zimbabwe to make sure that uh, public schools um, are accessible by children who cannot pay our uh, school fees mm. and we're still waiting for a policy from the government on that note to to mm. match the constitution is the australian embassy uh, is the australian government providing free basic education and to what level and what can the government of zimbabwe learn from the australian government yes the australian government does provide free education right through uh junior primary school and high school, so mm -hmm. right through to the end of grade 12. Tertiary education is on a fee fee mm -hmm. basis, um, but there are loans available. But the, the basic education um, is provided for everybody and it's accessible for everybody. So no matter what your socioeconomic right. background is, it is a really important thing. And I mm -hmm. think governments do have to put the resources into, from their budget, allocate the appropriate level of resources to build up the education system, to build up the teacher's training yeah. system, to build up the infrastructure. So it's something that um, over the years we've improved in Australia, but it is something, it's a basic, it's a basic right um, oh, for wow. all children. So we're fortunate to be in that, that situation. But there does have to be the, the policy decisions coming from the government are vital. Right. Well, thank you. And I think as, as the government of Zimbabwe is also moving forward, um, we really hope that they can pay attention to seriously um, making sure that children are in school. Uh, but coming back to the issue of leadership, what is mm. the... Um, what is the representation of women mm. in leadership, be it business, civil society, mm. uh, uh, you know, um, even government? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think statistically it's quite good and we have some wonderful mm. examples, wonderful role models in, right. in Australia, particularly over the last decade. So we've had, um, going back a long time before that, we've yes. had wonderful pioneering women, but particularly in the last decade, we've had our first female head of government, uh, head of state, sorry, the, who's the Governor General. We've yes. had our first female Prime Minister, who's the head of government. Mm -hmm. We've had a foreign minister who's been our first foreign minister um, for an extended period and our new foreign minister is also a female um, and she was previously our first defence minister, like Zimbabwe has mm. its first female defence minister, right. I understand. So we have some wonderful um, role models and in business too, on, on boards in terms of leadership, mm. we've got some great examples but the statistics are not perfect. Okay. They're not 50-50 yet. Right. They range from in government and private sector senior positions we're getting up into the 30%, mm. 40% in some areas, which is good, but it's not good enough. Exactly. Um, so it's something that there are a lot of active programs, including in the public service, mm. to to find out why women are not reaching mm. these top levels or why 50% mm. are not reaching the top levels. Um, as I said, so we are improving, but mm. there's all sorts of areas that need to be worked on, including, interestingly, the issue of unconscious bias. Mm. So mm. you can have a company or a public service agency, which is pretty enlightened and progressive. Everyone knows the issues, everyone wants to work um, to improve the, the gender representation, the gender equality, but still 
we don't quite reach there. So we're looking into in what ways are people um, unconsciously still being a bit biased and discriminatory and doing some really interesting work on mm. that, which I think is very important, particularly for the male champions right. who want to support. Even then, sometimes they've got a little bit of bias that they might not even be aware of. So we've really got to keep mm. keep working on all these issues. It's a long-term process. I, I, I think you, you've really just done a great deal about that. That leads me to the next question mm. to say, Australia has been working in development in Zimbabwe for a very long time. Um, and you know that the constitution of Zimbabwe also is going to a place where it's expiring the quota system in the next elections. Yeah. Is there deliberate efforts maybe to engage the government of Zimbabwe, since you are also working in Zimbabwe, um, to, prom to promote legislation that takes, uh, that takes from where the constitution was moving forward to ensure that we have 50-50 as beyond 2023? It's a really interesting question. I know there's lots of views about quotas and affirmative yes. action and whether they work or don't work. My personal view is that as, as short-term measures, they, they can be good to yeah. break right. some patterns and to introduce to provide those opportunities. As a long-term process, I do think you need, though, the cultural shift. Right. You need the fundamentals mm. to change. But as short-term measures, to, as I said, to break those cycles, they can be very important. We haven't had quota systems in Australia, but we've had very proactive programs to try to um, bring bring women into those path, or get them onto those pathways of leadership. Would you like to share maybe an example of that program that you, where you felt like maybe it was very impactful that Australian uh, implemented that um, was significant in laying the foundations to that? Well, certainly in the public service, I think um, we've had some very active programs. To, to basically firstly talk about women in leadership mm -hmm. issues and challenges. Um, so some very specific programs and surveys to identify some of the obstacles or some of the mm. perceived or otherwise as to why women are not making, um, not reaching that 50% representation. I think that's been very powerful again over the last decade in particular almost forensic work to find out what the underlying reasons mm -hmm. are and then to start looking at them to provide the support. So, for example, mm -hmm. one of the policies we've, which we've implemented, certainly in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, is to have a more flexible, family-friendly environment right. because, of course, the moment you do research in these mm -hmm. things, you'll show that there are all sorts of issues um, associated with the role of mothers or the family responsibilities that can mean that, that that women, as I said, they and sometimes they self-limit mm. out because the hours are difficult, it's hard to juggle mm. everything. So if you can provide a bit of flexibility in the workplace, providing, I mean, it wasn't that long ago we provided a child care centre at mm. our Department of Foreign Affairs and That's Trade. They're fairly, fairly basic things in some ways, but quite um, transformational. In Parliament House now too, there's been moves too to make it to bring in some of these flexible arrangements so that women don't have to make the choice between uh, tough choices between family responsibilities and doing um, doing their role so that it doesn't have to hold them back. So practical things like that, I think, can make a big difference. So I think that, um, that that's quite profound that maybe Zimbabwe can ad adopt to that. But anyway, we are going to talk more about that when we come back from the break. Do stay with us.